Prius on the inside here. It sure does. <laughs> now that's different there, that EV bar. Yes, and that's obviously pertains to this new plug-in Prius. Um, unfortunately, there, there is a button off to the left of the steering wheel on the dash. Do you see it's called EV? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that's your EV mode. Now what happens when the car, right now the car's powered on. If we were to turn off the car, under normal circumstances, when that is at a full state of charge, when you uh, start the car, it starts in a default EV mode. And let's say you were just doing a short commute to work, you may be able to drive in all EV mode to work and then all the way home and plug it in and do it all the next day again and only be in EV mode. Okay. So we're already in drive, uh, we're in park, so if you put it into drive, then um, we'll yeah, be able to go. Yeah, it's already on. And, um, it's very quiet, just like a regular Prius. You're not going to notice any driving experience, a, a driving experience that, that all is different in any way from a regular Prius. Mm. Uh, especially right now, since we are driving in hybrid mode. Basically, we've taken just added another, a secondary, uh, a second Prius battery pack, just as a, a placeholder starting starting point. Um, since we have experience with the metal high drive, you know, it's easy to it's easy to plug that in, for, excuse that lack of word, um, or excuse that word, uh, plug it in. Um, right now that gives us about seven miles of EV, of EV driving, um, but as I said, it's just you know, as the starter, placeholder, we just started doing uh, public road testing and research on the vehicles. Mm. And you're doing that plug-in testing around the world? Yes, we, um, uh, Japan, Europe, and United States, and we have partners in each of those countries. Mm. Uh, in the U.S., we're partnering with uh, two of the UC UC campuses, um, University of California, Irvine, and Berkeley. Okay. So Berkeley's going to be looking at the consumer side, um, placing the vehicles with drivers, letting them you know, drive it for four to six weeks, really see how it works or doesn't work in their you know, their lives and their driving, and do people want to plug it in and um, you know, educate about the trade-offs of you know, more EV miles equals bigger battery, higher cost, um, large you know, longer recharging time, sort of where is that balance that people want or, or don't want. Um, and then you see Irvine be focusing on the uh, emissions benefits of the plug-in, so both uh, criteria pollutants and greenhouse gas emissions. So they'll be looking at different scenarios of penetration, if, um, you know, what will, looking specifically at the South Coast Air District, what the benefits will be. I know all of these testing programs are fairly new, um, but have you noticed any differences so far in European versus Japanese versus American uh, habits? There's a lot more, it seems like there's a lot more sort of public voice uh, interest in it in the United States. Um, there's a lot of interest, I, I think, um, in Japan and in Europe too, but maybe not on the kind of ground level, if you will. They make a lot of sense in, in France because they've got 90% of their electricity is nuclear generated, so it's, it's very clean in terms of the air quality and, and emissions um, for greenhouse gas emissions. Japan has about half of their electricity generation is, is nuclear, so it makes it makes a lot of sense there. But I think um, the, there's not as much of a clamor or a, or a hype about it. Um, about the plug-in? Yeah. factor? Yeah, in Japan and um, France as there is in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And you were, you were telling me before we got started that the U.S. is, I mean, here at the show at least, you know, people are busting out the doors for plug-in hybrid sessions. Right, there's just a ton of interest. It's, mm -hmm. That's one of the challenges of, you know, bringing the prototypes out and putting them in demonstration programs is and managing expectations. And if you went to any of the sessions here, everyone said, you know, they're not ready, the batteries aren't ready, so let's, yes, let's kind of do this right and learn from our, you know, history of other technologies like electric vehicles and don't overpromise too soon because we don't, you know, that just leads to disappointed disappointments and um, doesn't lend us, you know, it just doesn't bring the market, doesn't bring the market along as it should, which is you know, informing them but also giving realistic timetables for when this will be here. For Toyota, what would it mean to 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 get it right? Get it right means just at an absolute minimum. You know, it has to have the, the quality, the QDR quality, durability, reliability. You know, our benchmark is 10 years, 150,000 miles. So, it, and that's just at a minimum. That it, you know, it has to be completely 
just bulletproof, uh, you know, safe, reliable, uh, dependable. But then it also has to have some other benefit for the customer. So it has to uh, provide some other uh, benefit other than just increased cost for the, for the plug-in. <laughs> Interesting, uh, interestingly, when there's a plug-in Prius in front of us, that has been modified uh, by a second, by a third party, you know, company. And you see it says it has 100 miles a gallon. Mm -hmm. We're going to make a right and follow it. Um, and that is because obviously they've added much more in the way of the battery pack. The car is probably quite a bit heavier too. Um, and pricier. And pricier. And it also avoids the warranty. Most people are aware of that. Um, however, with Toyota's production, as far as this vehicle goes, this has a seven mile range and still in theory, if you were driving, um, you know, short distances commuting to work in the morning and you had plugged it in the night before, you would be able to drive to work and then come home, plug it in and then do it all over the next day. And let's say your commute was even a little bit farther and it was 10 miles, you would, you would be driving along in EV mode and then you would as you are approaching that seven mile range, you would maybe click out of your EV mode and now be operating on the hybrid system. But if you were operating at slower speeds, slower than 30 miles an hour that is, you still would be working on your electric power and you could in theory still drive you know, long distances using all electric power. Um, now ideally, the, the, the idea is to, to increase that range to a little bit more than seven miles, hopefully 30 miles. 40 miles, let's say. Seems to be the magic number for. Uh, Seems to and be the magic how much number. have you spent yeah. a lot of time inside of the, the test vehicles, or? Uh, not a lot of time, but uh, we just uh, got them this. We're talking, you know, weeks now. We've had them, so. Um, but it is. Uh, I've driven a Prius forever, ever since the first generation. So. Mm. Um, you don't notice a lot of difference. It is cool to be able to, you know, get up to higher speeds uh, on EV mode. So. Mm -hmm. So, no, unfortunately, they don't give me one to drive on. So. <laughs>